And what do you mean it didn't bother you to live in a man's world? Hearts are giving a little bit of Jesus. Love that because I love going to hell. I, <laughs> I never stop talking, so who knows how that's gonna go. Hey guys, my name is Kitty. Welcome back to my channel. This is going to be my Summerween reading vlog. So today's Saturday. Summerween officially started yesterday, but I was working on another vlog. So we're starting this Summerween vlog on Saturday. And today, I really want to get into these books that I set for my TBR for Summerween, which is awesome because I was a little bit worried that my mood reading tendencies were kind of going to ruin my um, TBR that I had planned. But no, I'm still really in the mood to get into these books. And that is the Land of Elyon series by uh, Patrick Carmen. So I have the four books in the series. I think there's like a spin-off book. Um, with two brothers but i'm not really that interested in it i'll see how i feel at the end of this and if i want to like read that one i can but like these are the four that i'm mainly interested in reading i read these a lot when i was younger this is one of my favorite like favorite book series growing up i remember rereading this very often and it's been a really long time since i've like step back into this world and i've just been thinking about this series a lot and just like the general plot that i remember and i've just been really wanting to get back and reread it and see what i think now that i'm like way older than when i first read these so the plan is to start with the first book which is the dark hill the dark hills divide and see how i feel but i really do want to do like a complete reread of this series so this basically follows alexa and she like exists in a world where like the city that they live in has been like completely like sealed off from the forest that surrounds them because they're very like scared that there's like creatures and things lurking evils lurking in the forest and so the city has just been completely walled off and it's basically just follows her kind of like finding out the truth of like what lies beyond these walls i remember thinking it was really dark but like i don't know if that was accurate or if it's just like you know i was younger because I've, <laughs> I mean, I've read a lot of horrible things, um, but like, I don't know if I am remembering correctly how dark it was, but I read a good amount of middle grade and I have found that middle grade is legitimately creepy. Like middle grade horror, like can be done very well that it's actually very scary. Like some of my favorite middle grade, like horror series are um, the Clackety by Laura Semph and the Small Spaces series by Katherine Arden. The first book, Small Spaces, is so fucking scary. <laughs> um, and this isn't considered like a horror, it's a fantasy, but I feel like because I've read middle grade horror and I do know that it can be very scary, very dark, I feel like I may, I think maybe I was like correct in that when I was younger I thought this was like a pretty dark fantasy so I think it'll be really fun going into it now that I'm older and seeing what I think um, but I'm very excited to read this it has been a really long time and I feel like these should be really easy to read because you know they're they're pretty short um, the text is like super massive and you know they're middle grade so I think I should get through these pretty quickly but I'm very excited to jump into this series again um, but I will be starting with the first one and seeing how I feel if I want to like continue with the entire series um, but I think I will so I have the entire series here this is like my main priority for Summerween because I've just been really in the mood to reread them so the two other horror books that I have the first one is Lost Souls by Billy Martin I am currently 106 pages into this so I still have the majority of the book left um, but this could count for reading a horror book. So I have this one here. I'm really enjoying this one. It's just really dark and very disturbing. So, um, I have been kind of taking little pauses while reading this because I just finished Brainworms by Alison Rumfit and that was really dark and disturbing. So, um, I needed a little bit of distance between reading that and then getting back into this one. So, um, I do want to get back into this one, but I think it'll probably be once I finish this series out and i feel like okay like i'm ready for a very disturbing horror and i also have the strange nighttime journey of father stefan marlowe i really want to read this i think it's about a man kind of traversing through hell and trying to find his brother's soul i haven't looked at the goodreads page for this so i don't know if it's like generally hated or loved i don't know if any of my friends have read it but i'm really excited about not knowing anything and going in fully blind um i love that so i'm very excited and Hopefully I like it because I love when books follow somebody traversing through hell. I think it's really entertaining and I love seeing people's different depictions of hell. So I feel like 
This has the potential to be one of my faves, so I'm very excited about it. TBR for Summerween, but I am a mood reader, so you know, you never know <laughs> what will happen in this vlog, but this is what I'm in the mood for as of now. And hopefully I stay in the mood because I would really love to finish these books. So that is the plan for this video. I'm gonna go and get into reading, and once I have a reading update, I will, you know, check back in. Um, so yeah, I will see you guys a little bit later. So today is Monday. I was hoping to have a bigger update at this point, but unfortunately, I don't. <laughs> but I do have one book read for Summerween, so I'm just going to take that as a win. So I did finish my reread of The Dark Hills Divide by Patrick Carmen. Um, and I'm not going to rate any of these books because they are middle grade. And I do rate some middle grade, but this series specifically is more of like a nostalgia read for me. So I don't want to like pressure myself to try and think of a rating. Like it just seems like too much work when honestly it doesn't really matter. You know what I mean? So I'm not going to be rating this series, but I did read the first book and I had a really good time with it. I felt like I was like transported back to like my childhood when I was reading this. I felt kind of the same way I felt when I first read these books when I was doing my reread and it was really nice to just kind of have that nostalgia. I'm not like a huge nostalgia person. Um, I don't feel like I look back that often in fondness if that makes sense like of my youth and of my childhood um not to be like that my childhood and youth was bad or anything but i just i don't really like think back to things like that for some reason it's just it's not not part of my personality i guess but when i think about these books i do have this like sense of fondness and a sense of nostalgia that i'm just like I remember spending time just sitting down and reading these and having a really good time being super absorbed um, and I feel like when I stepped back into this world I was able to have that feeling again so I appreciate what these books are doing for me because they do take me back and I love that um, because I don't go back often <laughs> I don't have a great memory either so like a lot of things fade um, so it's like things that are really sticking in my head are the are the ones that I'm able to recall in this series reading the series is one of them um anyways so i did read it loved it i had a really good time one thing though about this reread that i never picked up on when i was reading these when i was younger not once and i was reading this and i was like am i am i getting this right or am i like am i reading too into it but then i went on goodreads and people were um agreeing with me so i was like okay so i'm not imagining this but there is a very like Christian vibe to these books that I never picked up on when I was younger. Um, but <laughs> it's very much some parts are giving a little bit of Jesus with our Elyon character. Um, and I didn't expect that. <laughs> I don't remember that when I was younger. I don't think I absorbed that. Um, so th there's that. It was... A little bit jarring like it's not super how do I say this like it's not like it's like preaching to you per se but like it's doing it enough that you will notice it if that makes sense um, and I was like a little bit not uncomfortable but I was a little bit sad about that because I was like oh <laughs> And don't get me wrong, like, I was in high school, I was listening to, like, Christian emo bands. They were making bomb music. Like, were you singing to God? Sure. But, like, that shit also kind of went off. Like, Under Oath kind of goes off. <laughs> but that is also a Christian, like, emo band or whatever. So, uh, you know, it's whatever. But it is something I noticed, and I did want to mention it, just in case that's, like, something you know, that you look out for, whether positive or negatively. Um, so the first book really focuses on the adventure of this 
girl in this city and everything that happens in here is very much like a contained story like we get the beginning the middle and the ending like it's pretty cut and dry sort of the ending is where we kind of like start kind of expanding and that's the part that i'm a little bit nervous about because in the first book there's like an evil character that they're like fighting against and it's all contained within the first book it's not like this evil character really like spreads across the rest of the series but it is a series so there has to be something obviously that we're going to be working towards another evil another thing to face so this is where i'm a little bit iffy because the second book beyond the valley of thorns starts a new arc sort of <laughs> from what i recall it starts a new arc where we are instead of focusing so much on like a human evil we start focusing on the alien elion character of this world who is kind of jesus <laughs> there lies my hesitation in continuing with the series because do i want to read you know a book with a bunch of christian allegories <laughs> i don't think so <laughs> but also the nostalgia like will the nostalgia be enough to kind of like wash away this whole theme um i don't know but i did start the second book um because i do want to continue i'm just a little bit nervous i'm 31 pages in um so far nothing religious see has has come about the story yet um uh, but i did see a goodreads review for this where they said that the christian themes you know got very heavy-handed and while i was like reading about that i didn't know the lion the witch and the wardrobe is also like considered like a religious -y christian book i didn't know that anyways <laughs> besides the point i'm scared <laughs> i'm scared so the good thing is that this book counts for one of the summer ween prompts which is why i picked it um so this book takes place in summer so that is one of the summer ween uh prompts so we have completed one and then if i finish this one it will count for a book with five words in the title so i do want to continue reading this i'm just a little bit nervous and i don't want this to ruin my nostalgic feelings about this series and honestly like that's kind of a a risk you take right when you revisit a series that you read when you were younger like <laughs> you are risking the fact that you might not like what the story did you know you'll you'll perceive it in a completely different way you're experiencing it a completely different way and obviously I am experiencing it in a completely different way because when I was younger I never noticed the religious themes in this book um but I'm just hoping that I'm able to still enjoy this series I will let you guys know what I think about this and if I do think it gets heavy-handed and if it does get really heavy-handed I don't think I would continue with my reread because I don't want to ruin this story for myself i remember this being my favorite book from the series so i have a lot of hope um <laughs> but oh it's iffy i'm scared but we're just gonna we're just gonna have to continue and just hope for the best hope for the best and hope the nostalgia is enough to just pull me through um but yeah this will be the deciding factor if i do continue with the series or not but either way if i once i do finish this one and i did finish that one it will still count for my summer ween prompt so i'm happy about that and i think i'm also going to be starting um the strange nighttime journey of father stefan marlowe and <laughs> i know i just said that i don't like religious books but i think that if i go into it like knowing it's kind of like a possession horror and like there is obviously that layer of like christianity i can enjoy it because like i know what i'm getting myself into right but when it comes to like children's books that are doing this christian christian theme very subtly <laughs> that's where i have like a kind of an issue with it but books like this where we're following like a disgraced priest and going through you know the levels of hell kind of looking for his brother like i can totally vibe with that like that sounds so fun to me aside from that i have just been doing some homework as you guys saw i did some patreon stuff and i did end up filming my mid-year book freak out tag today as well and that's not going to be up for like another week i think so i don't really have to start editing it yet because i'm actually going on a trip 
next week we're going to big bear and i'm really excited i think i'm gonna use my mid-year book freak out tag as an upload while i'm in big bear so that way i don't have to think about it so i will get to editing it before we leave but um i did film it and uh that was a big load off the shoulders because I've been putting off that tag. It's just really time consuming. It's like 40 minutes long, the video I filmed. Um, so I'm hoping I can short it down to like 30 minutes, but I don't know. <laughs> I never stop talking, so who knows how that's going to go. so it is what is today tuesday i finished my book this is truly tragic news to report <laughs> the goodreads reviews were right this was like reading the bible <laughs> honestly this kind of felt like what it felt like to go to like um like um I don't know how to say it in English, but like when you do like your primera comunión or your like confirmación and like you have to go to those classes with like the priest and they tell you about, I'm, Catholic, I'm, I'm Catholic, well I was raised Catholic, I don't actually believe in anything, but I was raised Catholic, did the primera comunión, did the confirmation, yeah, first communion, yeah, and um, we had to do these like classes, right, with this priest um, and he would like talk to us about like... <laughs> I mean, the only thing I remember clearly is him talking about the end of days and, like, the devil and shit. Um, but reading this book truly felt like I was back in those classes because the way that this story is told and formulated, it's like trying to sneak in, like, information about God, right? Like, it's trying to be subtle to, for children. Um, but it's, like, so obvious. <laughs> But like obviously probably to a child not because I wasn't picking that up. But also, who knows? Maybe I just wasn't a smart child. I was never really religious, like even as a child. So maybe that's why I just never really thought about it. It's the it's Jesus <laughs> and the devil and God and you know, like God talks to you. <laughs> I can't and the third book is called the tenth city and can you guess what the tenth city is? It's heaven <laughs> And so they're basically Gonna go to heaven, right? But not in the sense of like oh you're gonna die and you go to heaven. It's like this is a place you can actually go I don't think I can read it. I think I'm tapping out here. I think I'm tapping out here because this was a lot like towards like the end i was like okay like i cannot do this and there's like a part where they're like we fed him bread and fish and i was like please say psych like please say psych you have to be joking so there's like this line in the book that <laughs> i thought it was very weird and i don't know if it's just me but i'm gonna read it to you and you can tell me if you think it's weird um, so it says, I have been surrounded by men my whole life, and the journey to Castalia, with the mostly silent exception of Odessa, had been no different. This was a reality that did not bother me in the least. I lived in what often felt like a man's world, and I'd come to accept this fact and even enjoy my unique place in it. What the fuck do you mean, my unique place in it? <laughs> and what do you mean that it didn't bother you to live in a man's world? I really <laughs> I'm regretting this oh my god this is so devastating this is really sad for me because I could have done like the first book was fine like I had a good time it was fine but this is my favorite how did I not see that <laughs> honestly how did I honestly it's not even a stretch because like I didn't even know Under Oath was like a Christian band until like I think I was like in senior year and I had been listening to them to, for years at that point. So I guess I'm just really bad <laughs> or was really bad at picking up religious themes um, in things uh, when I was younger. Um, and now I think I notice it too easily, honestly. Um, mm. I'm regretting this reread a lot. So we're gonna stop there. We're gonna stop here. Phil's one of my summer ween props. 
that's great. We're not going to enter this because I physically think that I will not be able to handle that. Um, <laughs> so we're just... Let's move on. Like, let's move on, guys. Let's not even talk about this anymore. Um, that was a gigantic fail. So we're going to move on to this. I need something else because, honestly, that book almost put me in a reading slump, to be honest. Like, I went to the coffee shop today to read um and I was like in there and I was like I don't want to read this <laughs> like I was like I hate this um so thank god that's done and we can just move on and we can read this so yeah that's my update for today I still have two more days of summerween which is great so hopefully I can put this in here and read this book <music> Wednesday. I am on my second cup of coffee this morning. It is only 9 30 but I am so exhausted which I don't even know why because I went to sleep like at a decent time <laughs> ish um and I feel like I slept all throughout the night like I don't remember waking up at all um I don't even think Olive woke me up at all yesterday because she'll usually wake me up like in the middle of the night to like go outside to the bathroom but i don't even remember her waking me up either so i slept through the whole night and i'm so exhausted like i feel so groggy and like i feel like i have a hard time like keeping my eyes open like i hate this feeling <laughs> so on the second cup of coffee hoping this goes away so i have started my next book which is the strange nighttime journey of father stephen marlowe I am 30 pages in and I am really liking it so far. I think it is going to be like a journey through hell type of vibe. So far what I've gathered, because I don't know if I've given a synopsis of, about this, but after his brother dies, he really starts to lose his faith in like God, in the church. Um, and he's having a hard time being like a priest that <laughs> believes in God, which I figure is an important thing, right? If you're going to be preaching to people, uh, administering last rites, you know, it's you should have faith, right? You should have faith. But he has no faith. After his brother, after his brother's death, he's basically lost all faith. Um, and he really wants to just kind of like quit. What is this called? The priesthood? Is that what? I don't know. He wants to quit. Um, but before he can quit, basically, his friend's like, no, you got to go see this one, uh, priest who he deals a lot with like troubled um clergy people like <laughs> which i'm like how many are there um uh anyway so he is basically they tell him like you got to go talk to this man so and if that like doesn't work then we'll like see if we can find a way to like get you a sabbatical or something you know um but our but the father Stephen Marlowe has been having really weird dreams and he just had a dream where he sees his brother like in this kind of like under this volcano locked up screaming in pain and like his brother like sees him and is like please help me please help me so tell me that doesn't give hellraiser vibes like that's so hellraiser and this plot is also so constantine so i love <laughs> both of those movies i love hellraiser and i love uh constantine so i'm just like this is giving those vibes but like we have a priest as our main character. I think the only thing that can happen now is for him to basically go to hell and like try and find his brother because that's on the synopsis. 
The confessional disintegrates, the floor crumbles away beneath him, and Marlowe is plunged into a world both wondrous and terrifying where he must fight to save his brother's immortal soul. So he has to go to hell. I think we're going to hell. And I love that because I love going to hell. I, love <laughs> I mean... I love seeing people's depictions of hell, I should say. I don't like going to hell. Personally, never been, you know. But um, I like seeing people's depictions of hell because I always find them super, super entertaining. Um, and that's also why I really enjoy, like, possession horror, possession horror movies. Um, I feel like one of my favorite, like, depictions of hell movies is... I mean, Hellraiser, like, the Cenobite realm, realm is not really hell, but, like, it's hell adjacent. So like the Cenobite Realm, love that's in the second uh, movie. And I also really enjoyed Event Horizon's depiction of hell. I think that whole storyline is so fucking cool. Event Horizon is so cool. Um, and book format, like probably the one that stands out the most to me is Nelfs. There is a part where we have some depictions of hell, which I thought was really cool. And weirdly enough, this YA, um, like, fan row that I read, like, years and years and years ago, but, like, I loved that one, and that's the... I have it around here. I don't remember the name of the series exactly, but I know it's around here. Here it is. Is this series. The Angel Fall series. I love this series. It's so fun. Um, this is, like, one of the few YA, like fantasy romances that I'm just like I, I would recommend you know what I mean um but yeah the Angel Fall series is really fun and I think the second book they do spend a little bit of time in hell so um that was really fun too I should I should probably keep like a running list of like books that feature my favorite tropes I should probably do that um anyways I'm having a good time with this so far only 30 pages in but it is very very promising um, it is very much reminding me of my two favorite movies. Also, <laughs> my friend Andrew told me that um, Constantine, like the movie with uh, Keanu Reeves, has a novelization. I did not know, but bitch, I ordered a copy of Pango. It was like three bucks. So I'm so excited about that. I will totally read a novelization of Constantine because it's one of my favorite movies. I love it so much. Um... I feel like I should do like a novelization video because I do have a couple of novelizations that I've been meaning to read. So maybe I should do like a themed vlog just featuring novelizations. Maybe in November because I think there's a readathon that's like novelization November or something. Anyways, that's not, that's, that's besides the point. Um, so yeah, I did order that though and that is very exciting because Constantine does go to hell for a little bit in the movie. Um, not a lot, but still very entertaining. So we'll see how that novelization is. So I'm going to continue reading this. I will update you guys once I get into it. This is really fast to read. I feel like I'll be able to finish it really fast. Um, because again, the margins are gigantic in this book. Anyways, I'm going to continue reading. I'll update you guys a little bit later. Okay, so I just listened to like seven lectures. And this man has the most monotone voice in all of existence. It was like such a battle of will <laughs> to, to listen because I was like, I literally am about to fall asleep. Like no inflections whatsoever, just one tone the entire time. And I was like, ah, but I did it. I finished the seven lectures and I was like, oh my God. Um, so, uh, reward for doing that, uh, I'm gonna make myself something to eat because I'm actually really hungry, so I'm gonna make some, uh, food. I don't know what I'm gonna eat. I think we have pasta salad in the fridge, so I might just eat that. Um, and I'm gonna get a diet squirt. <laughs> Favorite soda of all time. <laughs> and I'm just gonna rest my brain for, like, an hour-ish, um, and watch some TV because like you don't like you know what you probably do know if you've ever listened to like a monotone lecture it's like you're fighting for your life like truly and in my comfy ass like chair like i was like <laughs> i had my feet kicked up and i was like i could literally go to sleep right now <laughs> i didn't i didn't but i could have very easily 
Um, that man should get it to ASMR or something. Get out of teaching. Go make some ASMR videos. So today is Thursday. It is the last day of Summer Ween, and yesterday I did end up finishing my book, um, The Strange Nighttime Journey of Father Stefan Marlowe. I did it. Uh, I'm going to give this two stars. It does have a hellscape, and I felt like the first 30 pages I was really interested because I was like, oh my god, like what's going to happen? I'm really you know, intrigued. There's this mystery of like, what happened to this brother? Like, why did he kill himself? And la la la. So there's like a lot of like, there's a lot of things that kind of draw you in, right? I'm like, oh my god, this is gonna be really entertaining. But the journey, mm, not my favorite. There's so much homophobic slurs in here. And I feel like the homophobia was like, never, like, discussed. It was never like, deconstructed. And like, no one ever really thinks about like, why, what they did was wrong. So I just, didn't really like the way the homophobia was dealt with in this book. I also really didn't like like the final and like the final boss fights. <laughs> I just thought it was so ridiculous and I was like, okay. <laughs> and the ending sets us up for being like a, you know, like a, a book in a series. And I was like, absolutely not. <laughs> like, absolutely not. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna give this two stars. Like, it was really easy to read. And there was a hellscape, like, he is, like, going through hell and stuff, but I don't know, just, like, it wasn't, it wasn't done well, and I didn't really enjoy, um, our character, Stefan Marlowe. I thought he was really annoying, um, and, yeah, I'm gonna give it two stars. So, so far, all the books in this vlog have not, <laughs> they haven't been going well for me. They haven't been going well for me, but it's fine, I guess, because I have completed a lot of my prompts. I just have two left. Um, it's to read a book in the dark and read a thriller or horror. I mean, I could double up and count this one as my horror book. I've been reading too many religious books, I think. That's my biggest problem, probably. <laughs> like, every book I've read so far has had something to do with, like, religion. So, it is Saturday. <laughs> it's been a couple of days since Summerween ended officially um but on thursday i was planning to read another book but then i had to drive for eight hours so when i got back home i was like absolutely not i am not reading anything and i just went to sleep <laughs> and that was that um yesterday was friday spent it basically reorganizing the entire house we're deep cleaning a bunch of stuff so it was just really busy with that so I've been thinking, I'm like, oh yeah, I have to like close out this vlog because I have to upload it for Sunday's video. I just want to come on here and say that I didn't read anything else. I wasn't a huge fan of the books that I read, except for The Dark Hills Divide. I did enjoy it. I just hated the rest of that series. And like, low-key, I kind of wish I'd stopped with the first book, but it's fine. It's fine. Um, but yeah, reading-wise not a great <laughs> summer ween but i feel like i still enjoyed my time you know trying to read these books and making this vlog i thought it was really fun i had a good time um but yeah not not with the books <laughs> not with the book and that on a sad note i hope you guys still enjoyed this vlog even if the books were 
you know, a little sus, but you know, it is what it is. Now I have to go wash Olive because it is flea season and she has fleas. I have been getting bit the fuck up by fleas. So, um, I'm going to go <laughs> wash her and I will leave you guys here. So if you want to leave me an emoji just to say hi, um, what emoji should we use? Like I'm trying to think of a themed one, but I really don't want to put crosses in my <laughs> the comment section. So how about we do a little ghost emoji for summer ween yes there we go we'll do a ghost emoji but yeah i'm gonna leave you guys here if you did enjoy this video please make sure to give it a thumbs up subscribe to keep with more content from me i'll see you guys in my next video bye